Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests, they went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year. Not without blood. He had to have some blood. Which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. Now, what the Hebrew writer does he describes the earthly tabernacle. God said now, when you build this tabernacle, there will be two rooms. One is the holy place. The second is the holy of holies. Now God says, Here's what I want you to do. Here's what you do. And, I, I, and let me quickly uh, describe it for you because I don't want you to forget this. Uh, in the tabernacle area, there was a courtyard. The courtyard was the place where the priests and the high priests came and they set up an altar and they made a sacrifice with a ram, a bullock, a, a goat, or a sheep. They killed the animal there in the courtyard. The courtyard was the area where everybody could gather. And everybody could not go into the temple of the sanctuary. But everybody could go in and gather in the courtyard. I want you to see the distinction. You see, the courtyard was representative of the world. And they killed the, uh, 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 the animal in the courtyard. But only those who were chosen of God could go into the tabernacle area, which is the uh, holies of holies. And of course, the most holy place. Now, there are two rooms. Once you leave the courtyard, you get to the first room, and the first room, of course, is the holy place. And, and then it is a, a big veil that comes down, and, and this big veil separates Room number one from room number two. Amen? Room number one is the holy place. And then you, and when you go behind the curtain, then you are in the holies of all. You are in the most holy place. And, and you are in the presence of God Almighty. Now, the priests, every day, whether it's the priest or the high priest, would come and would offer sacrifices in the holy place every day. But once a year, only once a year, that was the day of atonement. The high priest, only the high priest, not regular priest, but only the high priest, he went behind the, the curtain into the holies of all. And he was the only one allowed back there. And there were three pieces of furniture in the holies of all, or the most holy place. And, and you had the ark of the covenant. And then you had a uh, mercy seat. And above the mercy seat, you had cherubims. And above that hovered the presence of God himself.
nation. The presence of God was in the holies of all. I want you to picture this church. And God's presence was above the, the mercy seat. And the high priest would go in once a year. And when he would go in there, he would pray. And he would go to the mercy seat where the presence of God was. And there he would pray for the sins of the people that they might be rolled forward for one year. Now, of course, that was the tabernacle of God. Now the Bible says, in verse number 11, But Christ, being come a what? High priest. Now, if you understand what I just said about the high priest, now Jesus is our high priest. Amen. Amen. Now the analogy is very simple, but before I get uh, to uh, analogizing that to you, uh, uh, let me just say there are some in the field of uh, religion uh, who says, uh, and basically the Catholics, <coughs> those who those people who wear uh, the crucifix around their neck for a religious purpose. They say that it was not the blood of Jesus. It was not the blood of Jesus, but it was the death of Jesus that was important. Not the blood of Jesus, but it was the death of Jesus. And they say uh, it's the death of Jesus that uh, saves us and not the blood of Jesus. Well, fix it, brother. Preach. John didn't agree with that. Amen. Well, I want to talk a little bit about that uh, for a minute. Because I know, I know Brother Lord knows, and other preachers around here know that it was the blood. But they say, no, 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 it, it was not the blood, it was the death of Jesus. That's almost like pulling your hairs up. Uh, you, you know you, you can't get blood unless you die.
receive. Receive what? Receive the gospel that I preach. And wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved. Saved by what? Saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you are going to be saved today, it is by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul says, you are saved by the gospel which I preach unto you. You are not saved by how you feel. You're not saved by uh, uh, the sinner's prayer. You're not saved uh, uh, by sending a, a check to somebody on television and they pray for you. But if you're going to be saved, it's because of the gospel that I preach unto you. All right, then, the Bible says, by which also you're saved if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you believe in vain. Now watch this. Here it comes, the gospel. Watch this. Uh, uh, when you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 3, Paul says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Here it is. How Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. What is the gospel? The gospel is telling men and women that Jesus died. That's number one. But that's not all. And the Bible says, and read on, and that he was buried. Not just dying. But the Bible says that he was buried. And that's not all. What is the 
gospel. Well, we find in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, quotes, uh, says that the gospel is the power of God. But not only is it the power of God, but we read right here in this particular verse that it's the treasure of God. And if you want to possess the treasury of God, it is in earthen vessels. And what does that mean? That means this gospel that is being preached uh, 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 the gospel, this gospel is to be preached if, 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 if this gospel is to be proclaimed if this gospel is to be proclamated it is being uh, 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 proclamated by Jewish calendar, not the American calendar, not the Gentile. 
Gentile calendar, but the Jewish calendar. And then the Bible says, in verse number three, speak ye unto the, all the generations of Israel, say, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take them every man. I want you to emphasize and say this with me. Every man and what? Lamb. I don't hear everybody saying that. Lamb. Every man and lamb according to a uh, house of their fathers, a lamb of an house. All right. Now, what are you? Since Jesus is the Passover, I'm going to see what is required in the Passover. What is required in it? And when I finish, when I finish with this, I know it's going to be the blood. You're going to need 
must be without blemish. It's going to have to be a male, and it's going to have to kill me. Now, here's the point here. You see, you can have a man, and the male can be without blemish, mm -hmm. and it can be a male, and you can kill it. Bye. 
Bible others. Turn with me to John chapter 18. John chapter 18 and uh, verse number 38. We, we know when Pilate, he had been questioning Jesus back and forth. And he, he questioned him about truth. He said, what is truth? And, and when he had said this, he went out again and unto the Jews. And he said unto them, I find no fault in him. Pilate said, I find no fault in him. So, Jesus is the lamb, and he's the lamb without blemish. What are you doing, preacher? I'm qualifying Jesus Christ as our pastor. Now then, the Bible says that this castle must be a land, must be without blemish, and it must be a male. Well, turn to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. We're talking uh, to Joseph, and the angel was talking to him, telling him that not to be afraid and to take Mary as his wife and that which uh, uh, she conceived uh, would be a uh, son. And they called his name Emmanuel, meaning God be with us. So he was a son. That means he was a male. Male. Amen. So Christ is a male brought forth by the Holy Spirit. He's a man, amen. Nah. Okay, I got to move this thing quickly. I got God. <laughs> so, 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 we got to, we got a lamb, we got him without blemish, we got, he's a male, so now we got to kill him. Now we got to kill him, amen. Amen. Wow, 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 we got sacrifice. So the Bible says, we got to kill him. And kill him where? In the evening. In the evening. Mm. Matthew chapter 27, verse 145, real quick. The Bible says, there was darkness over all the land from the sixth hour until the ninth hour. That means from 12 o'clock to until 3 o'clock in the daytime. Jesus Of Hebrews. And the, the 14th verse. 
And I want, I want to show something before I close this thing. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our profession. Now listen to this. Verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Yeah. 
life is so uncertain, but death is so sure. Yeah. Yeah. You can't even uh, have dinner with your family and someone comes in your house with a machete, <laughs> chopping up folks. Yeah. Walk across the street and someone runs you over and keeps on going. Yeah. Yeah. We're living in a, a dangerous world and there is an urgency like never before to have the blood of Jesus on you because he's coming soon. It may be morning, it may be night, and it may be noon, but you don't know. But we all know we have to go. And, and I wouldn't want to be caught without the blood of Jesus on me. I'm going to say one more stanza. Why don't you come? Don't let the devil hold you back. If you just want prayer, why don't you come on down? We will pray for you this morning. Ask me not, O oh gentle Savior.